I am Dan Callahan, and welcome to the very first episode of Do Art With Dan. I'm really excited about this. I did up this uh, poster. I had the emoticons on Facebook to help people pick which of the which of the upcoming videos everyone was excited about. So today, we're gonna do how to do fan art. And I am a huge, huge, huge fan, like many of you out there uh, in the world, of Batman. This is me, when I was a kid. Uh, that's in a little Batmobile that my mum made. And that's my dad with uh, my sister on his lap. And that's us strolling through the city. I did a couple of concept sketches of what I was thinking I'd do. There are so many different ways that you can do fan art. Like, you can uh, be really excited about a new film or a new game that's coming out and you can just decide that, hell, I want to draw that thing, just how they've done it, just how they've designed it. You can, uh, yeah, get a photo reference and just sit there and try to replicate the image and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that can teach you a lot of things about what kind of design decisions people are making when they're making those characters. There's another way to do it, which is to absorb that thing, whether it's a game or a movie that you love, and then use your own imagination to think of ways that you can do it in either a character or a setting or something that seems like it would be in that world but has something coming out of you as well. How about doing your own bat sonar? Sonar. Just like a uh, submarine, Mr. Wayne. You know, you remember that Spider-Man sonar, spider sonar hashtag that was going around like six or 12 months ago? Something like that. Like, uh, try and do Batman, have the symbol on his chest, either tiny or big or whatever, the little ears. Aside from that, I think, you know, come up with something cool, something uh, different. How do you envision Batman? So these are those sketches that you saw, and they're more on the looser end of fan art, you know? Like, I don't ever see Batman wearing a bandana with a bike helmet and, like, uh, a headphone bat ears. It's got like a youthful vibe, like if Batman became Batman as a teenager or something. But what I want to do for the most of this video is show you how to do more of a realistic Batman piece of fan art. Hey, let me just push this over here just a second. Ah, right, now we can get into it. So I've quickly sketched out the muscles and the stance and the pose that I want to do. I've got the uh, line of action going from the head down to the spine. It's sort of got a slight curve to it. That's pretty much where I started. Oh, of course the head as well. And then I started building out the shoulders and the arms and I was like, yeah, there's a cool power pose and I'm gonna have him like, yeah, looking sweet. As the speed drawing is motoring along, I've got some things written down five uh, little tips on how to do some awesome, not only Batman fan art, but I'm gonna do another five tips of how to do, just in general, really good fan art. How to do Batman fan art specifically. So, number one, try doing some action. My guy here is just standing there stiff and that's kind of bothering me a little bit. That's a little critique I'd have of this. But yeah, next time I do Batman, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing him doing something cool, throwing a batarang or knocking the shit out of someone. Tip number two, try different styles. I've seen some really cartoony, lanky Batman. I'm hard pressed to say if there's any style that hasn't been tried, but yeah, have a go. Draw whatever the hell kind of Batman you want. Number three. I fixed that hand, that was a bad mistake. The, putting the thumb out there like that, uh, it doesn't, it's not normal, right? Like, it doesn't work. You gotta have a nice, strong fist when you're drawing Batman. Number four, uh, use a lot of black ink. Uh, with Batman, it can be really fun. Him specifically, uh, him especially. Uh, using a lot of black ink, uh, it, it's a great way to practice uh, messing around with shadows and whatnot. So, you know, under the eyelids or, you know, maybe he's got a, a wall or a building blocking, blocking half his face or something or, you know, he's skulking around in the night. It's a really good way, he especially is a really good character to practice 
uh, using a lot of black and, you know, the, the contours of the face and, yeah, so have a go at that. Number five, and this goes for any kind of fan art. You change one letter, fan, fun, have fun. Yeah, if you're not into it, if you're not feeling it, don't just do the latest and greatest thing that's coming out or whatever. Do fan art for you that you enjoy. Spur of the moment is the best kind of fan art. Just have fun with it. So tip number one on how to do some awesome fan art. Try to replicate the design of what you're fanboying over, or fangirling over. Uh, you know, get a screenshot from the film, from the game, and take a moment, just give yourself a few minutes to look at the character and you know, maybe you, you'll notice something that you didn't see before uh, in, the, in the character design. So don't trace it, but have that photo reference that you're really digging right next to your piece of paper and draw. Start with basics and try to do a, a dynamic pose which will really make your art pop. Tip number two for doing some fantastic fan art is try to bring new ideas to this thing that you're infatuated with. Say you've got a fantasy series like uh, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings and you want to do him in a sci-fi setting. That just popped into my head. That's, cr ah, that's a brilliant idea. Somebody should do that. Yeah, just mess around with the format. Don't just uh, copy it verbatim. Tip number three of how to do some spectacular fan art is to mash it up. Do like uh, SpongeBob meets Simpsons. Uh, or Captain America meets Iron Man. This can just be a really fun exercise and that's uh, that's what it's all about, having fun with fan art. Tip number four for how to do some splendid fan art is share your art once you've finished and get feedback. I know it's nerve-wracking, I find it nerve-wracking at times to ask for feedback and then to receive it, you know, it can, it can be a little daunting as well, you know, you've sent an email out to, to a friend or you've published it online or whatever, it, it can be a little bit freaky. But the benefits uh, in the long run of sharing your artwork and getting a little bit of feedback, that can be really helpful. But over the last few years, instead of getting feedback online, I've been opting to get it from friends and whatnot at uh, comic book conventions. I've done a few up and down the east coast of Australia and there's a lot of awesome people uh, out there in the industry, in the indie uh, scene and uh, yeah, they don't have a problem telling you straight up if you've got uh, art that's a little bit croaky or, or if a piece is like really vibing with them. The other thing is I think if you're actually selling your art at a stall and believe me it can be of any quality, in skill, any level. Uh, being there and actually selling some art, that can give you a good indication at times of not just if they buy it, but uh, people will get quite receptive with you. They'll jump at you and be like, wow, I really love that piece. There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of good artists out there. And um, I think a lot of good artists also underestimate their worth and their ability. And uh, you probably are too. I mean, there's a possibility. There will be at least one or maybe even a couple of people online or out there at a convention who will give you some really honest, good feedback and uh, yeah, some, some motivation as well. Tip number five for making some phenomenal fan art is to take what you've learned from drawing other people's characters and worlds and bring it into your world, whether it's a comic book or a video game or whatever the hell you're making. Take those lessons of like the design uh, balance that these pro level artists are using. Like the moments where people are putting like emotion into those characters, I think, you know, doing fan art, you can find that stuff and you can sort of think, oh, that's how they communicate that then you can use that in your own characters. Of course, you know, you'll have to do some research, come up with your own designs, don't just plagiarize the shit out of other people's stuff. Yeah, I think the more uh, stuff you consume, uh, whether it's games or movies or whatever, the more you can see where that fine line is between making original stuff that uh, is evidently your work and then making it familiar and approachable for people. 
Getting into the coloring. This is where it gets fun. Whoa. This dude is looking pretty sweet, right? Like, ugh. Like, there's a couple of little critiques, little mistakes here and there, but this dude looks sweet. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of this. And uh, I had a little hiatus of drawing lately because I've been uh, writing some comic book scripts and whatnot. And uh, it sort of takes me away from drawing. So to jump back in and do something killer like this, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm Batman. And Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. interact with you guys a bit and see what kind of art you can come up with. So please, uh, get in on this. Do your own Batman fan art. That would be awesome. So on Facebook or Instagram, uh, use the hashtag Batsonar. So do some fan art, use those hashtags. And throughout the week, I'll check Facebook and Instagram for those hashtags. In next week's video, I will pick my favorites and you'll go in the draw to win a big a1 poster of this Batman that I drew. There will only be one. It'll be awesome for like the back of a door or if, you, if you're really eager, you could frame it and chuck it on a wall somewhere. Uh, maybe in your little uh, man cave. All right, bye everybody. Have fun, subscribe. Thank you for watching Do Art With Dan.